Okay, so we're going to do some more examples from section 1.8 about composition of functions, but this time we're going to be given functions that are represented by charts. And so we have this chart here. Here are all the x values that we can plug into these functions, or at least the x values that are given to us. And here are the values, the corresponding values for the functions f and g. Okay, so the goal is to find what the values for the composed functions would be at these prescribed x values. So first, let's look at f of g of x. And so remember what this means. If you plug in x, let's say x equals negative 3, what you do is you plug that into g first. So what's the value for g at negative 3? It's 3. So now we take 3 and we plug that into f. Well, that's over here. So we go all the way across here to 3. And what's the value there for f? 0. So the answer here is 0. Okay? So now let's do the same thing for x equals negative 2. First, you take negative 2, you plug it into g, and the value there is going to be 2. But now you take that result and you plug that into f. So when you plug it in for f, you plug it in as an x value for f, and the corresponding value there would be for f would be 1. So the answer is 1. So let's do this again a little bit faster. So what is f of g of negative 1? So we start at negative 1, find the value for g, which is 2. Now we use that as an x value for f, which again is 1. Let's go to 0. We have 0, plug it in for g. That value again is 0. We plug that in for f, and we get 3. We go to x equals 1, plug it into g, we get negative 2. Now we use this and plug it into f, so we go here and we get 1. For 2, g be if you plug in x equals 2, g becomes negative 2. When you plug negative 2 into f, you get 1. And again, you plug x in when you plug 3 in for x, you get g is negative 3, but when you plug that in for f, you get 0. Alright, and so those are all the values of f of g of x when you plug in the integers negative 3 to 3. Let's do the same thing, but this time we're going to reverse the order in which we compose things. First, we're going to take x, plug it into f, then take that result and plug it into g. So let's look at the x value, negative 3. f is going to be 0 there, and now when we plug 0 into g, we get 0. For x equals negative 2, f is equal to 1, but now when you plug 1 into g, you get negative 2. x equals negative 1 makes f equals 2, but then, when x equals 2, g is negative 2. x equals 0 gives f equals 3. Plugging that into g, we get g equals negative 3. You take x equals 1, you plug it into f to get 2, but now you plug 2 into g, and you get negative 2. Plug x equals 2 into f to get f equals 1. Then you plug 1 into g to get negative 2. And finally, if you plug x equals 3 into f, you get 0. But now you plug 0 into g and you get 0. And that's how it works when you start out with charts and you compose functions. So there's a little back and forth going on here, but as long as you keep in as long as you keep track of what's getting composed with what, 
So in particular, the order in which you compose things, it's fairly simple to be able to do these kinds of problems.